summer time in the garden and the chores we have to do as gardeners and watering the garden is one of them. Here you see we have the use of two large water butts. So enjoy a, a view of me watering my wife's flowers underneath the pear trees. So what we'll do, we'll have a little chat about watering in the garden from rainwater. Now we have two water butts here fed from the downpipe from the roof as you can see on the left here and it's tapped into via this intercept I'm pointing at here that's linked directly into the first water butt. Now they are set at a certain level so that when the water butt overflows it will actually go back down, the water will go back down the drain pipe. Second overflow to the second tank, both of which are the same level. So again, when the second tank overflows, it overflows back to the first tank and the excess water will go down the drain. Hi, I'm Mark Brown of Superhome59 and this is a video all about water usage in the house. We've now moved into the kitchen. Now what I want to do today is to show you how a home can save water as well as carbon. And now we're in the kitchen to have a look at this tap here and this tap here. This was the original tap we had fitted in this kitchen when we moved in because so many of the fixtures and fittings in this house dated from the year 1980 and they basically were worn out. So we had a good opportunity to replace everything that was worn out with new items. This tap was one of them. Now I'll show you if you can just about see there's not a hole there as such, well, there's a hole, there's actually a metal grid. Now that aerates the water and applies some back pressure. Basically it's a flow restrictor. Now that was fitted there at our request in order to reduce the water flow out of this pipe hot and cold in order that we use less water when using the washing up area. Now after many years we actually found this was probably not a good idea because in this area you're generally filling up the bowl. Now when you restrict the water flow into this bowl you just have to wait longer for it to fill up. Now finally after six, seven, eight years this tap actually has broken so I've replaced it. Now the new one we've replaced it does not have a flow restrictor. That isn't because we've given up on our principles, it's just because of the practicality that this actually has a higher flow rate which allows us to fill the washing up bowl more quickly. Probably because this bowl is not, this area, this sink, this tap is not used really for much washing up of the hands where you're running a tap. Now if I take you to the small downstairs toilet, you'll see something different again. Now here we are in the downstairs toilet, and this was one of the sinks and taps that we had retrofitted back in 2008. And this is the one where we do have a flow restrictor, and it does actually actively restrict the flow of water. It's not particularly obvious in usage, but it's aerating the water and bulking out the volume with air. Now this is okay because you're not using this tap to fill up a bowl, you're using it for washing and generally you have the tap running or you wish to fill up the bowl area itself, but that's quite unusual. So it's okay to use a flow restrictor in this circumstance and it does save water. I want to also show you now the toilet. This is the toilet in the downstairs and it's actually a low flush unit. Well it's a bit cramped in here so let's go upstairs and have a look at the other one up there. This is the second toilet in the house upstairs and it's also a low flush unit. Both of these low flush toilets were fitted around the same time when we moved in, both to replace toilets that were either broken or just dreadfully calcified. So everything here has been done for a good reason. Now these low flush toilets have a two flush mechanism, simple press button mechanism, whereby you can have a simple flush for around two liters or going up to four or six liters for a full flush. I'll show you that next. Now here's the low flush toilet button. It's a flush wise device by Twyford. And there are two buttons as you may be familiar with from toilets. Now if you press the main one, actually count on two or three, that's a very low flush. And if you press both buttons together, that's the higher rate flush.
They also have a capability that when you initially flush them, they don't fully empty the system of water. So you can actually press the button again and more water will come out, as I will show you. Now I'm going to demonstrate the ordinary flush. I'm just going to press the button. And those of you who are used to legacy toilets will notice just how little water that actually uses. The system will now refill, but actually if I want more flush, I can just press the button again and hold it down and that will empty the system. So this is actually far more useful in terms of the default setting is for very little water and the longer you hold it or the more buttons you press, the more water you get, the longer the flush, the more water is used to dislodge any dirt. So what are the disadvantages to a low flush toilet? There is only one disadvantage to a low flush toilet. Because the flow of water is lower and it's less violent, it tends to not clean the bowl as thoroughly. So you may need to do a bit more cleaning. But other than that, it uses a fraction of the water of an old fashioned toilet. Whilst we're in this shower room and toilet, something else I can show you and that's the shower. Now you don't have to retrofit your entire house for the cost of thousands of pounds if you have a shower, you can just replace the shower head. One we have here is Ecomyra. It's an eco, so called eco shower head, and it has its restrictors built in here, allowing you to reduce the flow of the water through the shower. Now we are using a driven pumped shower here, and I'll show you what that looks like. That's quite a powerful shower, as you can see, and if you don't like a pumped shower, you can switch it off, and I'll show you that next. So to simply switch off that powered shower, I can go into my airing cupboard, which is next to the shower room, and simply switch it off. Or on. Like that. And off again. So this was like with those pumps switched off. As you can see, it's far less violent and dramatic and uses dramatically less water. So I actually use it with the pump switched off and I use far less water when I shower in the morning. Of course, none of this gets over the fact that really you should restrict your showers once a day just down to three or four minutes. You don't need to go any longer than that in the shower. This has been a quite short video from us at Super Home 59. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. We've covered water saving at a super home. So we had a look at water butts and recycling water from downpipes into the garden for use during the summer. We've had a look at flow restrictors on taps. And finally, we had a look at low flush toilets and that really is it for the super home. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, contact us online and please tune in to our YouTube channel for the rest of the videos. In the meantime, you too can conquer your house as with you.